Yo YouTube, what's going on? Awesome John Tony one here back again with another video. This time we have a tips video, and this is gonna be the BR draft strategy. Now I'm a top 50 BR player based on wins and win percentage. I've gone 12 and 0 three times. Uh, gone 12 and 1 a couple times too. Uh, I have that banner as you can see in the top right corner. That stub count is actually like 200k. I have stubs and roster investments. I'll get a video out for those. I'll get that coming out soon. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. As always, I'm going to try to upload daily or every other day, mostly gameplay and tips uh, for the game, rotating. And we're going to try to get those out on a consistent basis so you can become the best player you can be at this game. Now, 12 now twelve and 0 is probably the hardest thing to do in the game's history. I mean, in MLB 16, you actually had to go 20 and 0. And I don't even know how you do that. But if you can somehow go 12 and 0, you can get these rewards. There's a pack. They come out in duos. So these two were one, Glavin and Zobris, Parker and Machado, Mize and Carter, and Feller and Donaldson. And those are the rewards. You can get one of each set if uh, you get a choice. So if I go 12-0, let's say, so I'm going to get either Donaldson or Feller, Carter or Mize, or Manny Machado or Dave Parker. So there's going to be three people in that pack, one from uh, each set. Not each set, but yeah. Yeah, one from each set, actually. I can't talk today. So in BR, if you get to, you, guarantee, you get guaranteed a show pack every single time. Uh, if you get to three wins, you get a silver. If you get to six wins, you get a gold. If you get to nine wins, you get an 85 to 89 overall diamond, live series only. And then if you get to 12 wins, you get a 90 plus diamond, which could be like Judge, Trout, Arenado, Cole, Bellinger, etc., etc. And they actually changed it a couple weeks ago. So actually now you can get those old 12 and 0 rewards, like the 90 Edgar Martinez, the 91 Jim Edmonds, etc., etc. Now you, you, the, to go 12 and 0, if you don't know this already, I can't talk today. But if you, to go 12 and 0, you need to get to 12 wins. You cannot lose one time, hence the name flawless. You can also go 12 and 1, but you don't get the big flawless pack, and but you do get that 12 90 plus wins. So you can't get two losses. And so when I'm like, if I don't have more than four wins, then I'm gonna redraft every time, because I don't see a point. If you if I lose my first game and I'm 0 and 1, I don't see a point in playing continuing to play at 0-1 because then I need to win 12 straight to even get the goal but uh so these Donaldson Donaldson goes for 650k Feller goes for 600k these are 400k cards and uh then these are 200k and then these are one no 200k also so flawless awards are actually kind of rare they're not easy to pick up but if you do get them they're very good additions to a squad and for, uh, I mostly sell. I've never kept a Flawless Award or a World Series Award. So let's get into the draft strategy. This is the best way to draft a BR team. So this is a pretty good first round. We have Juan Merichal, Mariano Rivera, Mike Schmidt, and Lou Brock. So these, Marichal, Schmidt, and Brock are all from the Team Affinity. And then Rivera's from the 6th inning program. So right now, I can already rule out Marichal because there's no reason to take a 99 overall starting pitcher in BR. If we get a good goon, maybe we'll take it with our second diamond pick. But I like to have two starting pitchers that I can turn to and then a good bullpen so I can have an opener for the third game. Now, Mariano Rivera, I think, is going to be the move here. He's just so hard to pick up. That ERA is because uh, I just went in events and played with him, even when he had no energy. But Mariano Rivera is one of the grossest relievers in the game. I have his prestige, and uh, Rivera is really hard to pick up in BR, especially uh, with guys like Luke Voigt with silvers that will have small PCIs. Mike Schmidt is actually really good. Uh, he's got really good fielding, decent speed good hitting attributes. I don't really like his swing for BR personally. And then Lou Brock is a BR goon. I think he was made for BR. 99-99 speed, pretty good fielding, 125, 104 contact, 71-79 power. I'm going to go Rivera right here because I still want to wait around and see because there's some good third basemen. Like if I take Schmidt, I can probably rule out like Sano. And if I take Void, I can probably, uh, if I take like Lou Brock, I could probably rule out Schwarber. So I want to see the bullpen. I can keep filling it up, but I'm going to take Mo and see who I can gamble and get. This bronze round is actually a decent one. Uh, we can rule. We can. We don't need to rule out Waka, but we can rule out Sucre. I'm going to wait and see. 
There's also a really good bronze catcher. Um, we got Robinson Torinos. I think I want to wait for him. But I also want to see if I can get like a Schwarber or a Carlos Santana. Uh, Jimmy Kerrigan, he's pretty fast. No offensive attributes though. G-Man Choi is up five overalls inside edge, plus 14 versus righties. So versus righty, he is, is, is going to have 87 and 88 power. G-Man is just an absolute monster. Great swing. I'm going to go ahead and take him. Uh, he's probably going to be on the bench, but we'll see how the team shapes up. Here we have Anthony DiSlefani, Keo Nikella, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., and Byron Buxton. Buxton has plus one inside edge, which gives him plus three versus righties. Uh, Byron Buxton, he's not a hater, as you can see. He's a defender and a speed demon. I'm going to wait and see if he can come back around in a later round, because I don't want to waste that center fielder pick already, because there's so many other guys that could pop up that I could use in center. Keo Nikella is a pretty good reliever. Um, he doesn't. He's just really easy to pick up. And he throws directly overhand, so you can read his pitches very well. Anthony DiSlefani, he's got a really good repertoire. Four-seam slider, two-seam knuckle curve changeup. And his per nines are okay. I pitch pretty well with him, except I'm going to wait around still and see if I can get that Masahiro Tanaka or a good silver starting pitcher. I'm going to go Lourdes Gurriel. Uh, I hit very well with him. Uh, he's really good versus lefties and pretty good versus righties. He's also very versatile, so that's what I look for in BR. He can play second, short, third, left, and right. So I'm just going to move him around to wherever he needs to be. His feeling's pretty good. He's, it's actually not that good, but I'm going to look to play him in the infield where it won't really matter. So we're going to take Gurriel. Second diamond round, this is not pretty. We got Christy Mathewson, Michael Brantley, Luis Robert, the 90 overall, and the uh, 93 Griffey Sr. Griffey Sr., I think we're going to rule out. He just doesn't have that much power. And that's what you want in BR. He's got 89 speed, so maybe if I wanted to, I could lead him off. But once again, we're still going to look for a good right fielder. Christy Mathewson, we're ruling out because, well, why would we take him? Robert, the problem with him is that his uh, silver is pretty good, and I might take him because there's still eight more silver rounds. In this Robert, I just don't do good with him. And I'm not going to take Robert because I'm, once again, going to gamble for a center fielder. This Brantley is low-key pretty good. Uh, I don't really like it. I don't really like this diamond round. I much would have rather had something else. But we'll go ahead and take Brantley. He's not that terrible. This round, we have Cliff Lee, Taylor Rogers, Manny Machado, and the 83 Harper. I think uh, it's basically between Machado and Harper right now. Taylor Rogers is very good, but he's down inside edge, minus 12 on his hits per nine and uh, case per nine. So he's, not, he's down with 78 overall. I'm not going to risk that, even though he is a very good lefty. We're going to go ahead and take Machado. He doesn't look that good versus righties, but he does have plus four. And I think I'm not going to play this BR run today, so maybe I'll play it over the weekend. And I think Machado, I already bought 20 Machado, so I think he's going to get that bump to diamond, especially since they're going to add to his stats per righties. And Harper is actually pretty good, too. Uh, I don't really like his swing, but uh, his defense is pretty poor, too. So I'm going to go ahead and take Machado right here. Now we're going to take Aaron Bummer. It's obviously going to be the move right here. Michaelis, not that good. Harrison Bader is not a hitter. He's, a, he's basically Byron Buxton type. I'll wait around and see if he comes back again. Joe Morgan just isn't good versus lefties. And so I'm going to take Aaron Bummer here. He's down with 74 overall, which isn't that terrible because he, that's what he was before the roster update. He's a nice lefty. Deceptive, deceptive, deceptive. Sinker cutter, four seam slider. And so that's why we're taking Bummer. And we already know the obvious pick. If you've ever played BR, you know, so Lair, if you see him pop up, you take him. Because he is just an absolute monster. He does not have any added inside edge. Except, I think by the time I play this run, he might he might have it. Carlos Martinez is actually pretty good, too. He's got uh, five different pitches he can throw. I just don't like the speed differential in Martinez. Josh Taylor is a decent lefty. He's just down to four overalls. And McCann, I'm just once again going to look for a better catcher. And so Lair's just that really good bat that I'll need. Next up, we have Christy Matthews in the 76. Soria, Adam Frazier, and Ian Happ. Ian Happ is going to be my move right here. He's just such a glitch. He used to be one of those bronzes that you would always take in BR. Uh, but I really like his swing. His defense is kind of poor, but that's okay because I can put him at second or somewhere. Because he can play uh, second, third, left, center, right. And he's very good versus righty. So either he'll be a bench bat or an infielder. But either way, he's definitely going to make an impact. Next up, we have Mike Leake. 
Ryan Tapera, Austin Romine, and Kevin Biggio. Biggio, once again, another versatile uh, lefty. He's got a good swing. Romine, Tapera, and Leak aren't really that good in BR. Once again, going to wait for a better starter, reliever, catcher, and sec uh, But Biggio's a good, versatile bench bat. He might be our first option, so we are going to take him. This silver round is actually decent. We got DeSlafani again, Pedro Baez, Batances, and Yadi Molina. Batances is just a major, major glitch. He's got plus 11 to his case per nine and hits per nine. So that brings him up to a 113 case per nine, which is absolutely brutal, especially with his glitchy motion. And then he's got 103 hits per nine with a fastball that can hit 101, a knuckle curve, a slurve, and a two seamer, which is absolutely gross. Now, I'm, he's probably going to be our first option reliever. So that's why I want to take him first. We're going to go with the common starting pitcher here. We want to get uh, two commons in that starting rotation. And then we're going to go to, um, we're going to take a bronze and then uh, two usable relievers. We're going to take Steven Vogt here. He's up versus righties and he's a nice backup catcher. He can play first, left, and right too. He has got 80 and 80 contact versus right and 80 i can't count 83 power versus right so he's going to be a nice bench bat especially a defensive substitution if we need to make it now we're going to take kevin gossman here he's a good bronze starting pitcher and like i said we're taking two commons a gold a silver and then this bronze this bronze may have to start a couple games but that's okay because gossman is actually pretty good now in our second gold ground we got will crow xavier edwards Corey seager and Austin Meadows. Our outfield is actually pretty stacked right now with Brantley, Happ, and Solaire. But we're going to go ahead and take Meadows right here. And we're going to just move him over to uh, right field. And then Solaire is going to probably take over in... Oh, wait. That's a toughie. I think I'm going to take Brantley. And I'm going to put Brantley over in center field. Happ to second. And then Meadows probably to left. Or Solaire to left. Whoever has the better defense there. Uh, in our bronze, I mean not our bronze, silver round, I think I'm going to take Eddie Murray right now. Nice bench bat versus right. Uh, I can't hit with him 074, but uh, I need to figure out that swing, and it's definitely going to be easy. Bronze round is obviously going to be the lefty right here. We now have two. We're going to look for three. Sinsu Chu right here is looking really good. I mean, that fielding's low, but he's up five overalls and inside edge. So he's got 87 and 85 power which is very, very good. We got a lot of lefties that are going to be on the bench, but we'll get that situation figured out when we get to it. Next up, we have Adam Duvall is going to be the move here. Once again, very versatile. He might be a bench bat, but he plays very good defense, so I need to find somewhere for him. Ooh, that's a, okay. That's a tough round. I think I, I have to go Jock Peterson. Jock and Void are very good. And one of them is just going to force G-Man to the bench. So I think I'm going to go Jock here. He may hit leadoff. He may not. We'll see with that. Uh, reliever right here, Tommy Hunter. Uh, he's pretty good. Tim Hill. When did he get to the... Whoa. When did Tim Hill get traded to the Padres? Anyway, that's our third lefty. Now we have one more pen spot. Zach Britton's a... Okay, I'm going to say this one time. I do not like how the roster updates have affected BR. Because Britton... I'm going to just go over a couple. Britton, Bummer, um, Ian Happ. Those are examples of guys that are very, very good bronze discount picks. And then they just got bumped to a silver, and now they just ruined the entire draft process. So we're going to go ahead and take Lance McCullers Jr. here. He's a nice, he throws a knuckle curve. He's just a nice two starter. And we're going to look for this gold starting pitcher round right here. And we got Cindergard. Okay. Now, it's also a pretty good choice if we took Miner because he's very good. We could start him as an opener a couple times. But I'm actually going to go Cindergard here. He's got Outlier on that sinker, which gives it up to, I think it gives it 98 miles an hour or something. And then that fastball is going to be 101, change up slider curveball. Very good combo. There's our rotation. And then we got a one more pen pick. And we got two righties, two lefties. Adam Kolarik is very good at slider slow. Nick Birdie is okay, in my opinion. And then Jesse Chavez is just a control guy. I'm going to go Chavez because I need that good reliever that can just come in and control. So now we're going to set this lineup. This is not like last year's BR. 
So last year in BR, the move was always going to be your best hitter hit first. But that's not what it's going to be this year. Because this year, you have the three batter minimum rule. So you're going to be facing guys with like a gold or a silver starting pitcher. So you need to set your lineup accordingly to actually who's the best. Not who's the who's the best against like all around. So maybe like a Jimmy Rollins if I got him in the first round. In this one, I think I'm going to lead off Michael Brantley. So I can just have space to uh, move guys around. So I think I'm gonna go Brantley, Machado, no, Brantley, Lourdes, and then Machado, oh wow, okay, I can't decide. Okay, we're gonna move Machado there so we can get Solaire in the four hole, and then Jock, and Lourdes, and then Hap, and then Vote. So that's gonna be the good mix throughout the lineup so they can't play matchup against me that much. Uh, I think I'm going to actually switch Hap and Lourdes, just so if they bring in a lefty, I always have somebody to back it up right there. So then we got Rivera there, Bummer, and that's the squad. Thank you for watching this video. As always, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And let me know if a comment, I know this wasn't the best draft, but if you have a comment, just let me know. Because I am always open to suggestions for a different draft strategy. I just like to open it up to other players that can be used. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.